Welcome to another episode of The Onion Show, where we talk about geek culture, news, and lifestyle. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, Ken's appropriately dressed that specific way for a reason. Um, we just got back from an exclusive viewing. Yeah, of um, The Killing Joke. The Killing uh, Joke, yes. Normally straight to DVD in Australia, played in the cinemas today um, at 3pm across most cinemas as far as I know. It's only one screening as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. So these are just fresh thoughts, like we haven't really had a chance to, right. you know, like hash it out. Yeah. Like and this, this is our, this is going to be our, yeah. our usual discussion. Cool. Um, you're the, you're the bat uh, Batman expert here, so um, I'm going to lean towards you more a little <laughs> bit more with this. I mean, I've got certain opinions with it, but whether they're correct, whether they're not correct, whether there is my own opinion is a different story. Well, there, there, there are no, there are no um, right or wrong. opinions. Yeah. They're just okay, stupid perfect. opinions. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, let's go spoiler free first. Like, would okay. you recommend a purchase? Would you recommend people? I, do I, highly, I don't know if you can. Right. I don't know if you can watch this in the cinema. So, cinema um, in Australia. I don't think you can anymore after not this, anymore. right? Because it's straight to DVD, and it was just that the cinema is obviously Heights and Village. They knew that people will purchase these tickets to go and my way actually firstly my center the center that I went to which is Melbourne Central Heights um, it was filled when I was purchasing the tickets and I, I purchased it super early when the minute they announced it, I was like boom straight away I'll get it right within within two days or something like that um, but my cinema was filled so sold out. yeah sold Mine, out. I reckon. so I went to Northland shout yep. out to all the uh, people in the northern suburbs <laughs> but um, it was <laughs> It was about ninety percent full, I think. Um, so no, I, I, I was quite surprised. Um, we I, had did, I didn't think it would be right. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be very um, niche market, and obviously the people who went there were people who knew what they were in for. Of course. I, I imagine everyone who saw it has read the book, and you've read the book. I've read, I the, read book. the book. Yep. Yeah, um, you obviously you read the book. <laughs> I have read the book many times. Uh, so I think this movie was good. I don't recommend it to people who haven't read the book. Okay. I, I, I certainly wouldn't recommend it to anyone below the age of 15. In fact, I think this was an R-rated movie in the US. I believe so. Which is like our MA. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd really go so far as to say it was MA myself, but... Wait, so you would say it's R? No, no, no. I, I, I think that's a little bit... It's too much. Yeah, because Deadpool is yeah. an R-rated movie. Right. Okay, and that's an R... I... I, I because that was, that was like physical movie. blood and violence yeah, and all, that. and all sort of things. It's like more that. so the fact that it's suggested that things happen. Yeah, and right? it's stuff that you probably wouldn't expect to see in a cartoon. Which is fair. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it is a cartoon for adults or you know, young adults, that sort of thing. It's not yeah. for kids. Um, if you've read the book, I think it's worth seeing it on the cinema because yep. Mark Hamill is great, Kevin Conroy is great. The, oh. it, it, it's all... It, all the the groundwork is there. Yeah. Um, if you didn't, if you read the book, and if you didn't like the book, if you didn't like like what you read, you're probably not going to enjoy this movie. So I mean, let me quickly ask you, like, what you asked me before I deviated completely. Did you enjoy the movie? Do you do, you, do the you movie? Think, uh, the film? The, yeah, the animation. Yep. I I did. Uh, do you but, recommend it? Uh, I would recommend it to a fan of Batman. Oh, so you reckon for a non-fan, you wouldn't enjoy I wouldn't, this much? Mm, I, I'd be very reluctant to give this to a fan, to, to a, a non-fan. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, how about you? What, what, do you, what do you think? Um, I highly recommend it based on the voice talent. Um, the animation itself, I have seen better animation, better artwork. Um, I'm not saying this is horrible, but it is what it is, right? Um, after you, you know, you're used to watching, you know, like Studio Ghibli and a whole bunch of other sort of stuff. It's hard to compare. I know you can't compare. It's not apples with apples, if that sort of makes sense. But um, well, it's a different style. It's a different, it's a different style. The right. way they do it. So um, animation-wise, I don't think it's amazing. Voice talent is ridiculous. Like Mark Hamill was ridiculous. Well, these are the voices of Joker and Batman. It is now. The, I think yeah. most people who read a Batman book, mm. these are the voices that they have in their heads. Oh, absolutely. So. Well, for me, anyways, definitely. Mm. I think for our generation. Uh, and people who are into the whole comics and you know Batman and all that over the last what let's say ten years maybe ever since the Batman animation right which is like, like early the 90s, game yeah. and early nineties right um, so ever since then I mean this is the Joker this is the Batman this is you know what I mean like for me this is the perfect sort of um, orchestra of people to voice the right characters so mm -hmm. um, I recommend it on that specific um, scenario like I, I, yeah I think I think it's worth it. Um, do I recommend people going out to the film, uh, like to the cinemas? Um, like you, I agree, and I, I hate agreeing with you because I like it when we have we're you know butting heads a little bit. I'm sure there'll like be plenty of that you know? as the discussion goes on. There'll <laughs> so be plenty of that. very quickly, do I think that people should go to the cinemas to watch it? 
only if you're a Batman fan. Yeah, if you're not, don't worry about it. Do I think you should buy it on DVD or Blu-ray? Absolutely. I uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think if you're a fan, it's worth of, it. Yeah. It's worth having in your collection. I think this. I, I agree. Movie. Absolutely agree with you. Well, let's get more into it. Um, so this is, I guess, we're getting into spoiler territory now. Okay. If we need to okay. make that um, beep, beep, beep. official. What did you think about the first? Let's say half an hour of the movie. Right. So let me just get this right. That wasn't in a book, right? I wasn't... <laughs> it certainly was not. And that's in a book. what I thought because I thought I didn't owe Terry again, and I was like, I don't remember reading this. No, did no, I just a... completely? What happened? Did... Am I am I going crazy? So again? so this movie but... starts off with a very Batgirl focused um, introduction Correct. to s- establish the character, which I think is good. You need I think to have it's that great time. because if they got into it straight away with the killing joke, with for for the, for the people who. Don't have not sort of or are not into Batman and they're like, oh, there's a bad girl. Who the hell is a bad girl? They might not know, right? Yeah, and and even if so, you read the Killing yeah. Joke, I mean, Bad Girl's not really in the Killing Joke at all. Barbara Gordon is in the book, but Bad Girl is not. Whereas in this right. one, it's a it's it really Batgirl. pushes it. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's it. Builds the character. It shows you the relationship between Batman and Bat Girl. You know, um, yeah. It's it's I I, th- I think it's needed. And I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's needed. And especially if you're just going to watch the um, the book come to life, yeah. it's going to be very short and kind of oh, absolutely. hard to enjoy anyway. Mm. Um, now, you said a very important word there, the relationship between Batgirl and Batman. Right. What, what do you think about that? Because we're in spoiler territory here. Okay, so, so that scene? Say, yeah. Th- there is a scene where it's... Um, they do the uh, good old hippity dippities. Yeah, the, the old... Uh, <laughs> yes. They, they um, do that. So, what what did you think of that? I don't think it was needed. Um, and you know what? When I watched it, I was like, wait, what? That's what literally went through my head. I was like, what? Really? Because <laughs> I thought, and, and this is really dumb, but I thought the first thing that popped in my head is, but what about Nightwing? <laughs> No, am I mistaken? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. That, that, that's, I'm not cr- being critical. critical no, no, no. no but, but, but is that? Do you know what I mean? Like, you can understand why I would think that. My, my, right? my. Um, reaction. Is to that, she a kid? When and he's happen, like a yeah, little guy. Normally in the books, <laughs> well, he's not that old. Come on. Oh yeah, but you know what I mean. Like the, the age gap is what, like twenty years. Or in the I book, assume, anyways. like they have a more of a um a father Mother, daughter, daughter relationship. Yeah. Right. That's but, what I thought. You know, it's funny because in the animated universe, they always hint that Batgirl and Bruce Wayne, Barbara Gordon, they, 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 they have some relationship. It's never s- touched on in any depth because, that, well, that's a kid's show. And this is clearly not a kid's show because they... Oh, it's definitely she, not a kid's show. She whips off her clothes and, and you, you never... You don't see... You see more nudity in the book than you, than you do in this oh, movie. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll say yeah, that. So yeah, don't... Yeah. If that thing gets you off, then you're going to be disappointed with this movie. But yeah, you don't see she anything. and Batman get into... She, they do it. But they imply things happen, right? Oh, I mean, there's penetration <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you don't see it, but it's there. Right. Um, I think it was very gutsy for them to do that. It did was. they need it? Well, they... I, I didn't think they did. They established that they had this strange relationship, right? They do, but... And that's all you really need. Like, you don't need them to just go like, well, now Batman's giving her the silent treatment because they, they do it, and then, like, she's like, oh, you know, he's not talking to me <laughs> anymore. He's being like, cold and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah calling so, back. <laughs> that was a bit weird. Like, I, I think it's good... I think this portrayal of Batman is, okay. is, is great. You know, like, they got this guy who's very mm. um, uh, focused. He is very um, stoic, you know? Mm. So, but that was... Very interesting. So I, I, I was, I'm keen to know what other people think of that particular aspect of the um the yeah Batman absolutely. Please issue. comment below or something. Let us know. <laughs> uh, comment on our Facebook page. But um yeah, I, did, I didn't think it was needed. I I felt it felt awkward to me because it was kind of awkward because you're you're thinking of Batgirl as a, a, the daughter type yeah relationship and and only because like to, in my mind the the age gap is huge and i'm talking like 20 years or 25 30 years or something that's just in my mind right and then on top of that the whole nightwing like dick grayson he, he gets together with bob right? like, yeah well, yeah but so in my mind all of that is like wait 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 what what why, why are you doing this what, what's happening right now that's, so, that's what went through my <laughs> well mind. it's funny because there's no dick grayson in this movie there's no, no there isn't there, there fact, isn't it's just like yeah, but there is a Jason Todd in this movie. Did you see Jason Todd? I missed it. There's a scene where Bruce is on the computer, and then you yes. see these different things, and then and yes. there's, there's like the beaten up body of presumably Jason Todd. There's a bloody Robin, oh, I which totally is taken straight from the book. I totally missed it to be honest. So with you. you know, I, I thought they were going for the thing where mm. Batman is being protective of Barbara because he doesn't want her because they got the same this, thing um, with Jason. Yeah, yeah. So happen. it's like the father being protective of the daughter. So that was so a bit that's jarring. A bit weird. Yeah, that's a bit weird then. But yeah, it's, it's weird that they went with that choice, case. but okay. it has been like as I said in the animated universe, yep. the um, they sort of 
a hint to that as well. So it wasn't okay. completely shocking, but so, I, I could have done without it. Okay. So look, moving forward, now just the second half of the movie, I guess, or mo mo the majority Most, of the yeah. film, um, what were your thoughts translating it from a book over to animation? I thought they stuck very closely to it. Okay. The beats were very similar. It is? Um, yeah. It was a... It was a very faithful adaptation. Yep. You know okay. some of the other previous Justice, uh, not Justice League, the other previous DC animated films, they do deviate quite a bit from the they source do. material. They do. This one does not. It's quite similar, like almost panel to panel, or there's a lot of similar panel to panel, right? Uh, I would say so. I mean, honestly, I, I, I don't vividly remember all the panels. Okay. But yeah, you know, not like for the most part, the main, the main when they flash back, it goes stuff. to the sepia tone, and then yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm sure that they chopped and cut pieces out. And, but and a lot of it, like, there, there, I mean, I haven't read the book for a while now, right? But um, there are certain moments, like the big moments where I do remember, like, for example, the, the taking the picture and all that sort of stuff. You know, the, the, the eye with the one, the light, sorry, the joker with the... Oh, with yeah, the, yeah, when he... All that sort of stuff, like the big moments. It's it, literally, it literally the book, yeah. yeah, it is, which is pretty cool to see. Um, that being said, I mean, it sort of jogged my memory a little bit. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that panel. Oh, I remember reading that. I remember, you know what I mean? The so. thing is, because we're watching an animated, an animation of a book, you know, if this was a live action and you yep. could see that, if yep. you could see, I don't know, Heath Ledger's, for example, Visage doing that, then it would have been a lot creepier. Mm. Um, but I, I felt that Brian Azzarello wrote this Right. Um, screenplay. Right. My, my understanding. Okay. I, I'm a big fan of Brian That's, Azzarello. Yeah, you've always said that. I think he yeah, gets, yeah. He, he, he writes a good um, Batman. I, I do have a question for you. Go on. So, what are your thoughts in regards to the musical part component of it? You know, when he starts singing and stuff like that? Because the reason I bring that up... Because <laughs> in the book he sings and you never... He, and I never... And that, it's always like that. Every time it's a comic book and there is a moment where someone sings or whatever it is, right? And, you have and to make it, it up. Yeah, you have to make it up. Unless it's a song that I recognize from the words, then I'll be like, oh, I know that. And that person's, you know, whistling that or, you know. But generally, I'm like... What? It doesn't work for me. Whereas this, it actually works a lot more. I'm like, whoa, because you're well, actually, actually seeing see it, it yeah, and yeah. hearing it, and you know what I mean. I thought that was great. Yeah. I think all the music in it was great. It was really good. Speaking mm. of that, though, um, did you get before the movie started? Before and after. Yeah, yeah, That's my after. next question okay. to you. So, so before we talk yeah. about Mark Hamill, right? Which I'm sure will be on the DVD and Blu-ray. Right? Uh, extras. I think it's yeah. kind of worth. I actually think that's kind of interesting. I thought it was the stuff cool. that we saw. Yeah. The first, the first part was good in the sense of it's just here. You know, it didn't get me into getting get excited about the the. The, the animation itself but it, it's it, it kept me interested in regards to well knowing um, the backstory about, yeah, yeah the backstory yeah, and all that sort of stuff but I think the second half where they actually talk about the film a bit more that's when I was like whoa but, that's but so you, cool. you you thought they were talking about the uh, the music the music the, the, okay, and so all we that got sort of stuff yeah, yeah yeah so I guess it's it's probably like that across because you watched it in Village yeah, or yeah. Village right uh, no mine was a Hoyts Hoyts as so. well oh okay I'm oh gonna... actually yeah I wonder whether oh, Village yeah. said they got another sort surely of surely um, they would have another surely. DVD bonus on but, there um, huh, interesting last thing I want to talk about is yep. the ending of The Killing Joke here we go now, what... <laughs> not, not here we go I, I, I don't have too much to say about it but I just I'm curious like so you know that there's an ambiguous ending for the killing joke. Yes, and then when everyone's... I read the killing killing joke initially, yep, the, it never crossed my mind yep. that the ending was spoiler alert for the killing joke, the book. Yep, but it never crossed my mind that Batman kills Joker at the end of it. Right, but I mean now as an adult, all the hallmarks are there. Alan Moore, um, I guess that's all you need to say. Do you, you know, do you think it, it, that happened? Because even now, now, like I not, think when you intention... first read it, so you when you first read it, you didn't feel that way. Now, looking back at it again, do you, are you like, ooh? I believe the intention is quite clear that Alan Moore has Batman kill the Joker. Really? I, I, I believe that's the really? intention, but I think DC deliberately left, left it, it ambiguous. ambiguous. So, I mean, in my mind, he doesn't kill the Joker. Okay. I can understand, and I've, I've, I've heard all of the... Arguments for and against. Like, like yes, they're the, very compelling. Like Joker stops laughing first. Yeah, and the light goes off and yeah, it's all, you all know, that sort of like, stuff. Um, the the conversation and the dialogue be leading up to that component about um, the prisoner yeah, like, yeah. switching off the light the minute he walks into it. All that I mean, there's, okay. there's a lot of foreshadowing. So, there is, so, there so, is. So, so to me, I think um, the intention is clear I, that Alan Moore has Batman kill Joker. I don't think it happened in my mind, but I think it's one of those things where they purposely left it open ended. It's sort of a similar to Dece uh, Inception, you know, with the last very scene where they oh, no, the spinning top. There, there is no ambiguity on that. Oh, thing. come on, it was like, <laughs> they, shook and they cut it off. There's no ambiguity of it. 
if you want to talk to me about what happens at the end of um, uh, Inception, <laughs> comment down below. I, I want to hear what you have to say because to me there is no ambiguity in that in that movie. There's ambiguity at the end of Birdman, but there's no ambiguity at the end of this movie. They left it open-ended though. They left it open-ended. It was like, it was going, they shook a little bit and it kept on going, you know what I mean? Uh, there is no ambiguity. But this movie to me, there is some ambiguity, right? Okay, alright. Because, well, in this, it's interesting because in this one, like, for me, the appeal of this movie was I really want to see where they're going to go with the ending of this movie. Yeah. They're laughing. Yep. Ba Batman and Joker are laughing. Yep. But you only hear Batman laughing at the end. At the very end. Yes, correct. At, at the very end, correct. Yeah. Um, that being said, I, I read it. I interpreted when I read the book was that he did. They didn't laugh for such a long period of time. I know that doesn't mean anything. It's yeah, you know, well, it's hard to pace it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, the pacing is yeah. cut off a lot. So this one because it's like two panels or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but that's just that's what I thought. But um, as an overall, I mean, Killing Joke is really huge. You know, it, it's a big deal. Um, I do honestly feel, and I know I'm gonna get com like everyone's gonna like kill me to say this. I do feel that with the Killing Joke, and I asked you before we started filming this, is that what like I understand that it's, it's huge, but for me, it's like this, be only because. I think it's one of those things like Watchmen. It was great for its time because no one else written stuff like that. No one did, you know, this superhero lost an arm or is not worthy to hold a hammer or is not, you know, that sort of thing. But these days, it's done so many times. So for example, Babs being put into a wheelchair and all that stuff. And I think said, this is yeah, pretty shocking for the, it know, was when huge, it came out. But it, I think it's one of those things is where for its time when it came out, it was, everyone was like, whoa, mind blown. Whereas now, all these sort of stuff happens so much. It's like, I mean, for Christ's well, sake, we've got, you... we've got, we've got, we've got Captain America becoming evil. Well, evil. we know how long that evil. lasted. Right. All, all these millennials with their iPads and their and their Pokemon <laughs> Go, they might not whoa, enjoy. Whoa, it, whoa, but... whoa, whoa, Pokemon! I, I'm a Pokemon. But listen, Go person. this I, I think this movie is worth owning. I mean, it's Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. It's 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 a landmark um, book uh, story. Yep. I think the ending. Um, there was that ending, but there was a little surprise at the end yep. um, after the mid credits. Yeah, scene, I actually which was thought very that they forgot. I like that. <laughs> I actually thought, I thought that the cinema forgot to turn the light on because I was like, "What's going on here?" Oh well, they uh... they yeah well they they they, they left the lights on for a, off for a long time. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, it, it's worth it. Check it out. Um, get it on Blu-ray. Get it on DVD. I think it's. I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you thought about the relationship between Batgirl and Batman. Let us know what you think about the ending of The Killing Joke. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you think about the ending of Inception. Until then, guys, I think we're going to put a pin in it. Cool. And we'll see you on the next Insert Amy Show. See episode. Ya.